Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'd Continue reading this morning from the chapter of the author He has mentioned rahimahullahu ta'ala Babu qawli lahi ta'ala The chapter with regards to the statement of Allah the Most High Innama thadikum wa shaytan the chapter with regards to the statement of Allah the Most High, the meaning of which is, and verily this is only from a shaytan, he is seeking to cause you to fear his allies and those who are with him. So do not fear them and fear me only, if you are truly believers. If you are truly believers. So we see in the previous chapter we have entered into the portion of this work with regards to the actions of the heart that are related that are related to worship. The actions of the heart that are actions of worship and that must be sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And uh, we see that the author he began this portion with Al Mahabba and we have discussed several of the affairs related to that issue and now he begins with the next action of the heart that he mentioned in this work Kitab al-Tawheed alladhi huwa haqqullahi ala al-abid and that is the action of fear al-khawf al-khawf so we see that ibadah many times whenever we think about this word we think about some of the actions of ibadah like salah and zakah and fasting and hajj and no doubt these are these are all considered ibadat and actions of worship but these actions of worship are not truly worship until the heart is moving along with the body in these in these actions so therefore we have the actions of worship that are performed outwardly with the tongue and with the body parts and the likes, but these actions of worship are not truly worship, and they're not performed properly until the heart is moving along with the body parts in the time of the performance of that worship. And from this aspect, we return back to the definition of ibadah uh, and its foundation or in its linguistic meaning, and it has the meaning of dhul, and submission and surrender and khudu'a, and also it has the meaning of mahabba, love. So therefore, the people of knowledge have mentioned that ibadah wal wal mahabba. That is the peak of surrender and submission, and love. The peak of surrender and submission and love. And these are aspects that proceed from the heart. These are affairs that proceed from the heart. That one will love Allah Azza wa Jal and love what He loves and love for His sake. And the one who loves what Allah loves and uh, He loves whom Allah loves, then he will hope to have a great portion of the love of Allah for him as well. And uh, this is the issue of al arraja, And likewise, he will be afraid to do something that could earn him the anger of the one whom he loves or could uh, cause the one whom he loves to be angry with him. And this is the issue of al-khawf. And whenever al-mahabba and khawf is mentioned, likewise, along with that is al raja. Along with that is ar raja and hope. So therefore the pillars of worship, the worship of the heart, arkan al ta'abud al qalbiya al mahabbatu wal khawfu wal raja. And these are the affairs that the author is mentioning here, but he's mentioning this to clarify that these actions they must be for the sake of Allah. That these actions they are from the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal and he should be worshipped with this uh, with these actions alone and they should not be directed to anyone besides him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with mahabba, the mahabba, it causes the believer to move. And whenever somebody loves something, he will advance upon that and try to obtain it. So the one who loves Allah, he will advance upon the pleasure of Allah. And he will seek the good from Allah Azza wa Jal and nearness to him in a manner that is pleasing and beloved to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the case. And likewise, the one who has a raja and a hope, this will cause him to hasten to that which he loves and to hasten to the beloved 
So therefore now he will be moving on the path with loving Allah Azza wa Jal and also with the hope he'll be hastening and advancing and he'll be competing on that path for the goodness and for the ranks and for the levels uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the love and the, the raja it keeps him moving. It keeps him moving. It's pulling him. It's pulling him down the straight path to his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as for al-khawf, then the people of Nala, they mentioned that this one is like a fence around the slave, keeping him from losing his footing and slipping off with a straight path. Keeping him from slipping off with a straight path because he will fear Allah Azza wa Jalla and he will fear uh, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will fear not having the mercy of Allah azza wa jalla and not having the help and the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this will keep him firm from slipping off of the straight path. And uh, some of the people of knowledge have mentioned that with the arraja is pulling him and the love is pulling him, but the khawf is pushing him from behind so that he will continue moving up on the straight path. So that he will continue moving on the straight path. Because in this life, in this life, a believer's time and his term is appointed. And Allah, he knows. And everyone, he has a beginning and an ending. What is considered and examined is what one does with that time and that period. So a person's life, he has an opportunity to advance. And the pleasure of Allah, Azza wa Jalla, to fall back. Or to fall back away from that. So with understanding these affairs here, a believer, he can advance on the straight path. And he can increase in uh, goodness in this life and he can strengthen his deen and he become upright traversing on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge and with insight with knowledge and with insight so this affair is directly related to it tawheed al-khawf al-khawf it's an action of the heart and it's an action of, and it's an action of worship and it must be for the sake of Allah but the people of knowledge likewise they have clarified that just as al-mahabba it is different types and not all of it is considered an actual an action of worship and not all of it has the same ruling likewise al-khawf al-khawf there's different types of fear there are different types of fear there's a type of fear that is ibadah and it must be for the sake of allah alone and anybody who directed something from that to other than allah azza wa jal had committed major shirk and the people of knowledge they call this type of khawf here they call it khawf Asir, khawf sir, the the hidden, the hidden fear, the hidden fear, and then we have uh, other types of, of khawf, fearing other than Allah Azza wa Jal, and uh, and the different rulings. So with regards to the issue here, the author is referring to the khawf that is ibadah, khawf sir, the hidden, the hidden fear. Inshallah, we will discuss these affairs in details, and uh, this is a tawheed, and the one who has it and the one who completes it and perfects it, then his faith and his tawheed will be perfected by way of that fear. And if he is deficient in that fear, then likewise his tawheed will be a deficient accordingly. So this one here is an action of worship and ibadah, and it is wajib. Khawfun wajibun lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an obligation. It's an obligatory action of the heart that is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. After that, the, the one could give the fear or be afraid of something other than Allah and then it would have different rulings and it could be it could be shirk it could be shirk and to fear other than Allah meaning to direct the khawf al-sir to, to other than Allah Azza wa Jal, this is major shirk or it could be lesser than that somebody could fear something from the creation and that fear could be haram for him and a major sin or he could fear something from the creation and it could be permissible and allowed and not blameworthy and not blame and not blameworthy so these are the issues that uh, we discussed this morning and before we begin reading the chapter we take an introduction like in our previous chapter the chapter of mahabba to discuss the different types of this act of worship before reading the evidences in the text and inshallah in this manner it will be easy to see and understand how this affair of khawf and fear is related to this book, the book of at tawheed and which one is an obligatory right for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and which one is uh, considered at tawheed and which one is considered shirk, and which one is considered muharram, and which one is considered mubah and permissible. So the people of knowledge, they mentioned that fear, it is an emotion. It is emotion, an action of the heart. And the place of fear is in the heart. 
the place of fear and it is in the heart and it comes from expecting harm from somebody and he, or somewhere or some direction whenever whenever a person he is expecting for harm to come to him he's thinking about this and he thinks that harm may come to him from cer- from a cer- from a certain avenue then this will cause his here this will cause his heart to have this emotion this this emotion and this feeling this feeling of fear and this will bring about action or it will cause him to leave off something or it will bring about it will bring about a belief or a creed. It will bring about a belief or a creed. So if somebody is expecting something that's uh, dangerous or harmful or disliked to befall, this will cause him to fear. And the fear will rise up in his heart, and this will either cause him to do something and to prevent himself from that fear, to protect himself from that fear, or to leave something and to avoid it, to stay away from that fear. Or it could bring about a creed in his heart and a belief in his heart, likewise. So the people of knowledge in the definition of khawf, they say in fi alun, fi qalbi, fi min tawaqu'i, dharrin, aw adhan, aw uqubatin, yuthmiru fi'lan, aw tarkan, aw itikadan. And one of our believer or a person, whenever a person he's afraid of some harm coming or punishment coming or some difficulty or hardship coming, this time the fear comes where? It comes to the heart. It comes to the heart. And this will bring about action. And that action, either he'll perform something or he'll leave off something or he'll bring about a creed in his heart and a belief in his heart. So this issue here is the issue of fear. And it has different rulings. And it has different rulings. So the people of knowledge, they mentioned that and need to understand this chapter. We look at this issue of al-khawf, the issue of fear. And we can look at it from three different aspects. We can look at it in Ibi Thalathati Aitibarat from three different aspects. The first aspect, the people of knowledge they mention, is from the aspect of the reality of fear. The Itibari Hakikatihi, to look at the, the reality of fear. And the people of knowledge they say from this aspect, any the reality of, of fear. What is fear? What is fear? What is khawf? What is the reality of khawf? And the people of knowledge they mentioned that it is divided into four into four categories. You have to pay attention, huh? This is, the, this is the first. And we're looking at it from the aspect of what? The reality of fear. What is fear? From this aspect, fear is divided into four categories. The first one, khawfu asir. Khawfu asir. The hidden fear. Asir is something that is private. Something that is hidden. So what we're talking about now is a hidden type of fear. A fear that it, that it, that is from the unseen. And the people of knowledge, they mention yani, dawabit, yani, or principles or conditions and manners, how this will occur. This is the one that is ibadah. This is the one that's for Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the one that the author, he's talking about. Babu, qawlillahi ta'ala, inna madalikum wa shaytanu yukhawifu awliya'ahu fala takhafuhum wa khafuni. Fala takhafuhum wa khafuni. There's a nahyu and there's an amr. There's a nahyun and there's an amr. Fala takhafuhum. So don't fear them. وَخَافُونِي And fear me. And fear me. So this is خَوْفَ asir, خَوْفَ al-ibad. This one is the, the fear of worship. So the people of not as I say that this one will be from uh, somebody in his heart. He will fear something that is unpresent. It's not present. غَائِب so He will fear something that is, that is absent. To fear something that is absent. Either in reality it's absent. Or it has the ruling of being absent. Or it is absent by way of perception. These three affairs. To have fear of something that is not present. It's absent. Whether it's literally it's absent. For example, somebody may be in America. And there will be somebody in India. Or in Egypt. And he's afraid of them. And he's afraid of them. They're not present with him. And they're unaware of him. Entirely. But they're afraid of him. And they're afraid that he is going to harm them. Or to cause some ill to befall them, or to cause them or their family members to become sick, or to bring some type of calamity to him. This person is in a whole other land. He's not present. So he's afraid of him in this manner. And not because he has, for example, rockets, he's going to shoot a rocket. No, because he ha- they believe he has power. They, somebody will believe that this person who is absent, who is not there, he has power, he has qudra. He has ability to harm him from wherever he's at. This is called khawfu asir. And this is something that the Sufiya are known about. 
and, and they and they and, and this is with regards to people who are alive and they will call uh, their followers to fear their mashaykh and some of them they will have mashaykh and they will fear them and they will fear them and they'll be in lands far away they'll be afraid of them if they if they did not uh, comply to their commandment or do that which they had uh, required then they are afraid that they will harm them and they know about they know about their situation and they know what they're doing and, uh, and and other than that, and we're talking about fear, but likewise they'll have them call. They'll have them call. They'll tell one of, their, one of their students that if you're traveling and you're far from me and you find yourself in danger, you call my name. You call my name. I know people, I know people personally that were involved in these affairs and Allah guided them and their mashaykh have told them that. This is something that is known. So they have this. They have this creed of falsehood. So that one likewise is a shirk that came in the chapter of dua and istighatha. But here we're talking about fear. So likewise those same people in the same manner that they have fear of their mashaykh or, or, or the, and the likes like this where they're false gods. And this fear is the fear of worship. The fear of worship. So this is with regards to fearing something that is, is absent and in reality he's not there. He's not there. Somebody also could fear something is absent. I mean, he's absent, and his absence is in, 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 it takes the ruling of being absent. Like, for example, the person in the grave. Because in reality, the grave is there. Maybe the grave is there in front of him. Maybe the grave is there in front of him, and the person in the grave, he's there in front of him, and he, in, in the grave. But it's as if he's absent because he's dead. Because he's dead, and he's not there. He's in the grave. He's in the ground. But they will fear them. They will fear them. They will fear the people in the grave and the odiyah of the grave and the lies like this. So even though this thing, he's present and he's really there, but it's taking the ruling as if he's not there. So he fears the person in the grave that he will cause him to become sick or cause him to, uh, to have an uh, ailment before him or calamity before him and the lies like this. We have seen in previous classes how uh, one of the people were riding in a car was riding in a car, and Sheikh Salih Ali Sheikh, he mentioned this, Hafizullah, how one of the students were riding in the car with an individual, and uh, then uh, somebody came uh, to get, uh, to, get uh, to get some sadaqa. A young boy came to get some sadaqa. So he gave him, the man, he gave him some sadaqa. He's riding in a taxi. The boy comes to the window to get some sadaqa. So he gave him some sadaqa. And he said, give me some more. He said, I don't have change. He said, I I'm gonna get you change, give me some more. He said, okay. Uh, he, said, uh, he said, give me the money back. First, first he, he said, give me the money back, I'm gonna give you the change. And then whenever he gave him the money back, and the boy said, I swear by Bedouin you're gonna give me the money. I swear by Bedouin you're gonna give me the money. So then the man, he said, I'm not gonna give you nothing. <laughs> he said, I'm not gonna give you nothing. The driver, the driver at this time become terrified. The driver at this time become terrified that, that he, oh, you swore, he swore by Bedouin you're going to give him the money. If you don't give him the money, Bedouin is going to, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. And then until the end, uh, any, the, 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 the brother, he told him, man, just go, I'm not giving him nothing. Just go. Bedouin is not going to do anything. And he said that there, the whole way there, he is making dua. And the man is like calling on, the, on Bedouin. He's afraid of him. He's afraid of him. Then whenever they get there, he, they get there safely. And he was like, well, Bedouin didn't do anything. Well, what happened to Bedouin? He was like, oh, Bedouin Kareem. <laughs> like this, Bedouin, he's so generous and nice, and he, he pardoned us. And he, so this is a hidden fear. He's afraid of the person in the grave to this extent. He's afraid that in, if he didn't obey, or if he disrespected him, or dishonored him, or didn't fulfill any, his right in the life like this, that he has the ability to harm him. He's afraid of him like this. He's afraid of him like this. We also heard stories that people of knowledge have mentioned that one of them will uh, will swear by Allah, wallahi, 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 he did this, or wallahi, he did that. And then somebody who knows him will say, swear by, swear by the wali. He, he, he'll be quiet, he won't swear. He won't swear because he's afraid if he swear by the wali, the wali will get him. The, the, the wali will, 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 will harm him. He's afraid, he's afraid to do that. Even as mentioned stories about some of them, that one of his companions will reprimand him, and he, and he, and he, will, uh, he will swear. And swear by the wali, and then uh, his friend will say, oh, he, he was, what, what is wrong with you? How dare you? How can you swear by the wali and you know you're lying? But he doesn't reprimand, he doesn't reprimand him whenever he swears by Allah Azza wa Jal. But whenever he swears by the wali and his friend, he knows his lying. He said, how could you do that? How could you do that? It's a major affair for them. It's a major affair for them because of this creed they have in their heart. 
In any case, here this fear here is called Qawf Asir, and this is uh, this is Shirk. This is Major Shirk. This is Major Shirk. The Wadi, he has no authority, he has no power. The, 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 the Mashaykh is not able to harm the people from, with, with, a, with a superpower or some type of uh, uh, unnatural power or some type of power. This is giving that person the Rububiyya the, the, the of Allah Allah, he is the one who knows what is going on in his creation. And Allah, he is the one who brings about events and harm and good in his creation as he will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to believe that the people have this ability and to fear them in this manner, yani, this, is, uh, this is shirk. This is shirk. Likewise, uh, the people of not as I mentioned, or that person, or that thing that they fear, and they give this fear to yani, unra- uh, unlawfully, unrightfully, is something that is absent, yani, according to perception. And that is with regards to the jinn. Because the jinn, they are around us. We can't see them. Maybe they're present, but we are not aware of that. We're not aware of that. We can't perceive them. So it's ghaib hissan. It's ghaib hissan. So this is the case with them and the people, uh, some people, they fear the jinn likewise. They fear the jinn, the, the khawf, sir, and they think that the jinn will harm them or afflict a harm to them or their children or their loved ones. And the likes like this and they'll be afraid of them. They'll be afraid of them in the unseen. So this here, this is uh, khawf, sir. Mata yakun min ghaibin haqiqatan aw hukman aw hissan. Hakikatan aw hukman aw hissan min ghaib, someone that is absent, someone that is absent. This is the this is the issue here. This one is khawf asir, khawf asir. This is the one the author he's talking about. This is the one the author he's talking about. So this khawf here is two types. There's no third type. It's either tawheed or shirk. The khawf asir either is for Allah or it's for other than Allah. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي do not fear the, the allies of shaytan, the helpers of shaytan, but fear, uh, but fear Allah Azza wa Jal. So this khawf here is either going to be the khawf of the people of Iman that they have from Allah, or it's going to be the khawf of the people of shirk that they have from their false gods, that they have from their false gods. There's no, two, or there's no third avenue with regards to khawf asir. It's either going to be tawheed or shirk. The second type of khawf, which has a different ruling, the people of knowledge, they mentioned uh, the fear of a person from, uh, from the creation. For example, from another person. And this will cause him to leave off an obligation or to fall into something that is impermissible. And in this type of fear, he will fear the creation. For example, he'll fear a person. He'll fear a person or some people. And he will fear them to the extent that that fear he has in his heart for them will cause him to leave off an obligation or to neglect an obligation or will cause him to perpetrate a prohibition and to commit an action that is impermissible. This one here is muharram. And it's a major sin, but it's not, it's not shirk. Somebody, for example, he's afraid that his boss uh, will uh, not like him if he sees him praying if he sees him praying, so he will neglect his prayer. And the issue of leaving the prayer is a whole other story. Right here we're talking about just the issue of fear, to understand the reality of the different types of fear. If he will cause him to neglect his prayer because he's afraid of what the people at work will say about him or the people in his school will say about him, so he'll neglect his prayer and delay it to the time that's not permissible or he will uh, run and hide somewhere and peck it real fast, whatever the case, causing him to be negligent with an obligation because of, uh, uh, because of this fear he has for the people, because of this fear he has for the people. And he, this is just an example so that we can understand this is impermissible. This is impermissible. So with regards to performing the action or, or, or if they caused him, for example, to do something, cause him to do something that is, uh, that, is, that is haram or to leave off something that is an obligation. All of this, any yani that is moved by the fear of the people, this is, uh, this is muharram and it's not permissible. But, and the people of knowledge they consider from a shirk al-asghar, a shirk al-asghar, because he gave preference to the fear of the people over the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. He gave preference here to the fear of the people over the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. If he's going to fear the harm from someone if he's going to fear the, the punishment or if he's going to fear not being accepted, he should fear from Allah Azza wa Jal. First and foremost, he should fear from Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So that, that's one of the benefits of the fear, is that it will carry the person to perform the obligation, that it will carry the person to, to leave off the prohibition. So whenever it is weak, then the fear of the people come in the heart. The fear of the people come in the heart. The people of not as they say, Man khafa Allah, khafa hu kullu shay. That whoever fears Allah truly, sincerely, then the whole, all, everything will fear him. Wa man khafa ghayr Allah, he khafa min kulli shay. And whoever fears other than Allah, and he'll be afraid of everything. That he will himself, he'll be afraid uh, of everything. With regards to this issue here, what is not considered or not, what is not intended is al-ikrah. Al-ikrah is whenever somebody's forced. Somebody's forced to do it out of coercion. He's forced to do it. When somebody has a weapon, for example, and tells him he cannot pray. You, you, you cannot pray. At this time, it's not included. This is not included. This type of fear here, we'll see as natural and normal in a person. He's not held accountable for this type of fear. But So this is not included here. But if he was afraid yeah, he, uh, of, uh, of the people in another manner like this, yeah, he, uh, afraid of not being accepted by them, or that, they, that he would not be liked by them, or, or even afraid... Yani that, that something may happen to him, but it's not it's not real. So waham. Then this and it caused him to be negligent in his in his affairs, in his religion, then this is Muharram and it's a shirk al asgar. But it's not major shirk. It's not major shirk. It's not major shirk. So this is uh, important to be able to differentiate between between these affairs and the rulings and the likes, so that a believer he will not transgress the limits. So that a believer, he will not transgress the limits. Maybe he will see this happening in his family, or see this happening in his community or society, or he knows somebody this happened to. If he's not careful, he could de declare them to be disbelievers, but he had to be learned, and fall into the methodology, methodology of the khawarij and so on and so forth. And, and he could be misguided himself in this manner. But by having knowledge of these affairs, he can be adjust, and he can be upright, and he can place the ruling in the, in the, in the manner that, it, that is required. Just as Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned, Umirna and Unazil and Nasa Manazilahum, that we have been commanded to put the people in their, in their proper places, in their proper places. So the one kid who committed shirk, we call him a mushrik. And the one who committed uh, lesser than that, he committed a major sin, we call him a fasik. We wouldn't call him a mushrik. We call him a fasik, and it's a big difference. It's a big difference. And the rulings are, 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 are very important to understand. After this, uh, the people of Nala's mentioned this, the third one, and it's actually related to the first one, but it's called Khawf, Khawfun min wa'idillah. So the first one we have Khawf al-Sir. Khawf al-Sir, that's, that's fearing Allah, azawajal, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and feeling, fearing the power and the authority and the command of Allah and the decree of Allah. Now also we have fearing the threat of Allah, fearing the threat of Allah, fearing the punishment of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامِي وَخَافَ وَعِيدٍ The promise of goodness is for the one who fears standing before Allah and fears his threat. Fears his threat. This is a type of fear likewise. Khawf, and this is wajib, and this is from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fear his threat. And then the fourth type with regards to the reality of khawf, al-khawf al-tabi'i, al-khawf al-tabi'i, which is the natural fear. The natural fear meaning that it's the fear that Allah He created and, and ingrained in the human being and it's normal. And this is for a, a person, for example, to fear, uh, to fear danger, to fear a ferocious animal, for example, to fear a robber or to fear somebody who is an oppressor and, and the likes like this. All of this is, uh, is a natural type of fear and a person he's not held accountable for that and this is not blameworthy. And this is something that yani, is even found in the Quran for Awjasa minhum khifa. And he, uh, Ibrahim, he, he had fear from, from the angels when they came to him, uh, alayhi salatu wasalam. And likewise, uh, Musa, he had fear from Fir'aun uh, and Harun, both of them. Both of them, Musa and Harun, alayhi salam. They said, Oh, our Lord, we're afraid that he's going to transgress the limits or, or, or oppress us. And he, so Allah he said, well, la ta, la do not fear, do not fear. But this is something that's natural, it's normal. Even Musa, he left the town. Khaifan uh, he's afraid and he's looking behind. And he's afraid that Fir'aun will, will catch up with him and the lights like this and the army of Fir'aun. So this is a natural type of fear. This is a natural type of fear. So again, we have the fear that is in, in private, the public, the, the, the private fear, the fear that's for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. The fear that's for the sake of Allah, this one must be for Allah alone. 
Then we have the fear of, uh, of a human being, the fear of the creation that causes a person to neglect an obligation or perpetrate a prohibition or perpetrate a prohibition. This one is haram. This one is haram. Then we have the fear of the threat of Allah. The, th the, the fear of a threat of Allah. This is an obligation likewise. And then we have the fear that is, that is natural and normal and great in the human being. And a person, he's not blamed for this one. A person, he's not... He's not blamed for this one, and he has a, it's a normal fear. But uh, the people of knowledge, they mention likewise with regards to the normal fear, uh, a believer, he should be strong, and he should have trust and reliance upon Allah. And the normal fear can become blameworthy if, a per if it overcome a person to where he becomes a coward. Some people, they're afraid of every little thing, and he, every, every, little, every little sound, every little noise, every little instance, he'll, 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 he'll be afraid. Some people, like they say, he's afraid of his own shadow. And he's afraid of his own shadow. He's a coward, and he fears has conquered his heart, and he is terrified of this and that. And and, and somebody come behind him, and he freaking jump, and and he's nervous, and and the likes like this. He should not be in that manner, but and to, to to where it gets to this extent. So this is a different type of level, uh, any uh, of khauf. Yani is called juban, and it's to be a coward. But a believer, he'll be strong, and if he has a tawhid, and he's strong by that. He'll be strong by that and by his trust and reliance upon Allah And then if this natural fear occurs to him and then likes like this, he's not held accountable, alhamdulillah. He's not held accountable, alhamdulillah. We have some other aspects of, of fear to discuss, but it is time for shuruq and we close with that. Have that.